what would be shocking to me if it's a name that I just haven't even seen in any mock draft for any team drafting like the top 40. If I haven't seen that player, I think I'd be I'd be shocked by that. But what? if it's a player that I haven't seen mocked to the Lions, I'm not going to be shocked because there'll be guys that are mocked way ahead. That end and this up. is one of those deals, though, where I'm like, yeah, my guess is, based upon all the evidence that we have, that Brad Holmes' draft board is probably better than Pete Traeger or Mel Kuyper or <laughs> Pete Prisco or whomever. Now, that doesn't mean he's 100% going to get it right. But I mean, if I were to go through the scenarios I think are, are likely to happen, I think the likeliest scenario to happen is that Brad Holmes trades up. I think that's the likely scenario. Mm-hmm. Then I think the likely scenario is that Brad Holmes trades back. <laughs> so my third likely scenario is they stay at, at at 29 and they would draft somebody that we've heard of that kind of makes sense and, and that, you know, the, the pool of players, and there you go. The fourth scenario is that they stay at 29 and take somebody completely off the board. That And that's kind of what we're talking about here. Here's some of the feedback we got because we said it's a name I have not, I personally have not yet seen mocked to Detroit. And we told you, we gave you five names and you had to kind of guess which one or which guy you would take. Scott writes in 29 is way further down than we're used to picking. And that means it's inherently harder to guess. I'm guessing they have us taking Lab McConkey wide receiver, Georgia. If the Lions pick at 29, there's probably 20 dudes that it could end up being. Uh, from Ryan in Arizona. In that pool of praise, players, Frazier would be my pick, and I would not be happy. Will writes in, if I'm picking between those five players at 29, I'm closing my laptop and heading home for the night. <laughs> from an unnamed texter, one of those five, Frazier, but I didn't hear Graham Barton, who I'd take over Frazier. He did go. Uh, I'm pretty sure he went on this one. I just didn't mention him. Yeah, he went to Tampa at 26. Uh, unnamed texter, Lab McConkey would shock most since my last name is Conkey and was McConkey back in the day. I'm a bit biased. We watched the kid play this season. He is a Brad Holmes kind of kid. My last name is Conkey and was McConkey back in the day. You changed your last name? I imagine at some point his ancestors dropped the MC from it, so it just became Conkey. Hmm. Maybe they didn't for whatever reason. I think that I want to know more about that. No, it would be like a, a Sullivan or O'Sullivan, you know? Like yeah, they just drop it. Gators absolutely right on. Yeah, I, I I know what it means to change a name. <laughs> I just want to know why. Why would an O'Sullivan drop the O? Because there was Irish bias or something? I don't know. You're right. Well, you it wouldn't be for just Sullivan. Yeah. Of course it would be, but I'm just, <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Oh, anything. Listen. <laughs> Immigrants do strange yes, things. Okay, all the time. It changed the spelling of your name. <laughs> my grandfather. Yep. My wife's last name is. Hold on, hold spelling on. was changed. Hold on. Your grandfather what? <laughs> my I, grandfather. I, my 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 mom's father. When he came to this country from Sweden, mm-hmm. in I'm not sure what year it was. I think it was the late tens or the, the in the twenties, sometime in there. Uh his name is Gustav Olson. Olson with two S's because that's a Swedish thing. At some point. After my mom was born, when they, they were living in Chicago, he thought that, you know what, there's too many Olsons because there's a lot of Scandinavians that live in the Chicago area. So he decided to change the name from Olson to Johnson. Another <laughs> name that's not very right. popular. <laughs> that at some point he realized, oh, wait a minute, there's a lot of Johnsons. So he went back to Olson. Okay. So, you know, my mom's name technically, I think, would be, you know, Olson Johnson, Olson Anderson it is a whole mess. That is a mess. Yeah, but my grandfather did that way my, before. My dad's parents have the most old school names, like old school. So Like first names? Grandpa and Grandma Karsh yeah. were Fritz and Mabel. Oh, yeah. Well, I got <laughs> Gus and Gerda. Gerda. Yeah. And there's a Millie in there. Nice. <laughs> there's a Astrid. Not a Millie. There's an Astrid. Uh yeah, there's a, there's a lot going on on the Swedish side. Yes. All right, so anyway, your pick. <laughs> we got sidetracked. Well, okay, so I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking Lad McConkey would be a typical Brad Holmes going best player available, mm-hmm. if that's what he thinks. You know, the guy ran a sub-4, 440. Um, he was uncoverable at Georgia and has great hands. I mean, there's there's a lot to like about him, and then you're wondering about, well, does that mean anything? Does that pretend anything with Amon Ross St. Brown? Do they not want to sign him to an extension? I find that hard to believe. So I'm kind of ruling him out, but that would be the classic, I'm taking best player bill. Mm-hmm. Then you've got 
Edron Cooper, who's a linebacker, and it doesn't seem like the Lions have any need for a linebacker. So I, I want to rule him out, and yet that's another one. That's a Brad Holmes, what, what are we doing? But even I don't think that they're going to look at linebackers, so I'm ruling him out. Uh, that leaves with an offensive lineman, and who are the other? A, a safety, and so it leaves you. Makai Wingo, the defensive oh, tackle. Oh, yeah, Wing, Wingo. So I don't know much about Wingo. I'm going to guess it would be um, Zach Frazier, the guard from West Virginia. He's a little undersized, 6'3", 315-ish, but he's pretty strong. He had 30 reps on the bench. They speak really well about his athleticism, uh, how he's a pretty good uh, pass blocker and and, and also a, a run blocker because he kind of locks up the defensive line. Um, and it sounds like a guy that they can go for. I'm going to go with Zach Frazier because it also fits a need, but it's – He's a highly thought of guy. Daniel Jeremiah has him rated as the 37th player available in the draft. The pick is in. And with the 29th pick of the 2024 NFL draft, the Detroit Lions select Zach Frazier, interior oh. offensive lineman, West Virginia. He writes, Frazier's former state wrestling champion who's nasty, versatile, and hungry. This is a Brad Holmes, Dan Campbell prospect, if there ever, as well, ever was one, with a West Virginia product oozing bulldog characteristics. If we learned anything from the Jameer Gibbs and Jack Campbell picks last year, it's that the Lions draft guys they like as opposed to dwelling on needs and perceived positional value. So, hey, Here's what Daniel Jomaya had to say about him. So he's quick to the second level and adjusts well in space. He's a bulldog, collecting one knockdown after another to finish plays. Frazier was a four-time state wrestling champion in high school and carries that tenacity over the football field. He'll be a day one starter and tempo setter for the team that drafts him. High praise. Yep. Because it comes to the, if the Lions draft him, wouldn't think he's a day one starter. Um, but who knows? Yeah, I mean, look, it, it, it does sound like Dan Campbell. Does guy. sound like a Dan Campbell guy. And now the box is checked. We've seen him mocked it to Detroit. Okay. If you want to see the whole thing, go to P Traeger on uh, NFL.com and check it out. How would you feel about that? I mean, is that be, Frazier be okay over, with it. over yeah. a chop? I'd be okay with it. I'm I'm the problem is I find myself spiraling out of control in a whatever Brad Holmes wants. Yeah. And I, I shouldn't. <laughs> I shouldn't. I but I'm sort of acquiescing all opinion yes, sir, to the guy yes, sir. who's 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 just crushed it. And is is doing the thing that we don't most desperately want, and that is to get somebody who's a draft ninja. My guess is if this is the name that's announced, yeah, that people initially be like, what? Because there are other names that people will recognize on the board, and then they'll probably have a reaction like you would have. Was like, well, it's Brad Holmes. He knows what he's doing. But then as soon as they, they show like a highlight package yep. and have everybody talking about him, yep. and the word bulldog comes up, and maybe they're showing him pancaking guys all over the place, yep. and then they're showing him – Hey, he dive bombed the guy after he already blocked him once and he's taken him all over the field. And then they go and show his highlights from his junior year in high school where he's pinning every heavyweight in, in, in the state. And, and they talk about all that. Something will go viral from his right. wrestling highlight exactly. clip. Yep. Then everyone will be on board if that's the pick because it seems like this is a guy that would have the highlight package that would resonate with Detroit Lions fans because we love the grit. 100%. Yeah, but they, they do that with every player. They I know draft. they do. You know, like Logan but, Stenberg or whoever. Pick an offensive <laughs> right. lineman they draft. Look at this guy, right? His motor. If, if it's anything, he's too tough. Right? <laughs> right. He drinks motor oil. Okay, we got it. And it's <laughs> like, all right, man. He might bleed too much. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> so we'll see. But, I mean, we are in the camp that we trust Brad Holmes. And I like Light Vander Esch because he slept in his pickup up in yeah, the mines in right. Idaho before the draft. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> And that's okay because these guys are young prospects and they're showing the ceiling they might have, and that's what the draft you know shows do. And it gets every fan base excited. Yep. No, you're right. You are correct. Well, keep your eye open for that. Uh, by the way, the Jets unveiled their uniforms. Did you see that? I did. Kind of subtle. Yeah, I didn't see a whole lot of difference. It looked like it might be an extra stripe or something or something manipulated with a stripe. I want to get into it maybe later in the week because the Lions unveil. For people who don't know, the Lions unveil their new uniforms on Thursday. This week? Which is which yep. is intriguing. I, I'm sure there's a reason. It felt like that would be a draft night thing. Like they'd unveil them on draft night, but they're no, going for no. a week. You do it before so the people buy it before the draft. So you then you, you see everybody wearing the jerseys at the draft. Okay. Fair enough. Um Anyway, yeah, it uh, 
I'm, I'm intrigued by this, what direction they're going to go. But that feels like a conversation for another day because we've got this Red Wing game from last night to react to, the one to, coming up tonight to discuss, and all of what we need to have happen tonight because this team still needs some help to make the playoffs, but they very well could get it. Plus, Skater, we, we've got a Tiger game this afternoon, and we'll get into the Tigers a little bit next hour. And uh, <laughs> weird things afoot with the Pistons. I'm not quite sure what's going on, although I have some ideas. Uh, 248-539-9797. It's open line, so get your calls in. Just a reminder, you can stream the show with the Odyssey app. Download for your mobile device today, A-U-D-A-C-Y. On top of that, uh, you can stream through our website, 971aticket.com, where Champ and Chump are posted. And the story by the Birch Kid about Lucas Raymond maybe turning into a star. Go to 971aticket.com. Additionally, you can stream with video. Twitch.tv, search up 971 the ticket there. YouTube.com, same thing. You can participate in the streaming chat. It's Carson Anderson, or should I say Carson Olson Johnson, here on 971 the ticket.